We've got some slightly awkward abdominal anatomy here. Uh, the anatomy of the median arcuate ligament. It's potentially useful and it, the anatomy itself isn't that difficult to describe, but it trips people up because there is a median arcuate ligament, there's a medial arcuate ligament, there's a lateral arcuate ligament. Those all belong to the diaphragm. Um, but arcuate just means curved, so you will find other arcuate ligaments and arcuate things around the body, just because anatomists like naming shapes, right? But for the median arcuate ligament, we're going to go and look at the diaphragm. So, uh, the diaphragm then. Um, Here's some of it here. The diaphragm is a dome. It's the main muscle for breathing. It's a skeletal muscle. We can choose to control it. Um, here are the lungs, here's the heart. Uh, the diaphragm is in its relaxed state here, so it's up in the dome. When the diaphragm contracts, it will flatten, push these abdominal organs down and when it relaxes again. And so you change the volume inside the thorax and you pull air in and push air out, right? Um, now, the, the diaphragm is attached to the body wall. Um, so, this bulge we've got in here, we've got the, the vertebral column. The diaphragm is attached to lumbar vertebrae L1, L2, and L3. It's attached to the costal cartilages. Um, we can see that a little bit here, maybe. Uh, the costal cartilages of the ribs. 7, 8, 9, 10, and then it's attached to the floating ribs 11 and 12, and it's attached to the, the xiphoid process down here at the bottom of the sternum. Um, so it's got all these anchoring points around the outside, and yet it goes from this dome shape to flap shape to dome shape to flap shape, right? And the diaphragm is separating the thorax from the abdomen, and yet there are structures that need to pass between the thorax and the abdomen. Uh, the inferior vena cava, which I've taken off with the liver, the inferior vena cava passes through the diaphragm, has its own hole. Uh, the esophagus is going to pass through the diaphragm to the stomach, has its own hole. And the aorta, that major blood vessel there, the aorta passes through the diaphragm. Or really, I think it's considered to pass posterior to the diaphragm. Now we can see some of the edges of the, the lumbar vertebrae here. So there's an aortic hiatus, a hiatus meaning a gap. And this aortic, this aortic hiatus is formed by, there are two slips, two legs of muscle of the diaphragm, the crura. And the left leg or the left crus passes to the L2 vertebral body, the right crus passes to the L3 vertebral body, and they go either side of the aorta. And we can see this curve as the aorta passes through the aortic hiatus, and this, this, this curve here that we can see anteriorly, that is the median arcuate ligament. Um, median, because it's in the middle. All right, it's a little bit to the left of middle, but it's in the middle. It's an unpaired central structure. Um, arcuate, because it's curved. Ligament, well, it's not really. It gets called a ligament, I guess, because it's, I don't know. A lot of things do get called ligaments. You've got fascia over here as well. Really, it's a musculotendinous structure, because what we're looking at here is we're looking at the skeletal muscle forming the diaphragm, which is probably quite tendinous around here because the muscle becomes a tendon as it attaches to the bone, right? But that there, that is the median arcuate ligament. The aorta, is passing through the diaphragm at about the T12 vertebral level. Now look, as soon as the aorta passes through the diaphragm and enters the abdomen, it gives off its first anterior branch. Now these three anterior branches are going to supply blood to the gastrointestinal tract. This first branch, the celiac trunk, is going to supply blood to forga derived structures, that is the lower esophagus, the stomach, the spleen, the pancreas, half the duodenum, the liver, the gallbladder, all right? So the celiac, and it's right there, it's right up against that median arcuate ligament. 
Uh, the other thing that we have here, I mean, we also see like the thoracic duct going through there, but the other really notable thing that's happening here is that the nerves that are going to innervate the gastrointestinal tract are going to follow the arteries out to get to the gastrointestinal tract. If you want to know more about the nerves that run to the gastrointestinal tract, go and watch my video on the enteric nervous system, the uh, second brain of the body. If that's all you need, you're done. You may leave the class. Uh, the medial and lateral arcuate ligaments, they're not in the middle, they're on either side. And I can't show them to you on this model or most models that I have because the kidneys are in the way. So the medial and lateral arcuate ligaments, well, they're, they're here and here. Um, they're again curves made by the diaphragm attaching to the vertebrae and attaching to the ribs. Um, but I got the kidneys in the way here. Now, what we can see is this big chunky muscle here, sulcus major is a big chunky muscle that's gonna run from the transverse processes of the vertebrae T12, L1, L2, L3, and L4, and it's gonna run down to the lesser trochanter of the femur, so it's gonna be involved in, in hip flexion. It's gonna do that. So that means that psoas major is gonna be overlapped by the diaphragm. So if you can imagine, the diaphragm is gonna curve over psoas major. That is the medial arcuate ligament. We'd have to take the kidneys off to see it. Now the medial arcuate ligament's a little bit weird um, it's running from, so there's an attachment then of the diaphragm to the body of the L1 vertebra, and then it goes over psoas major and attaches to the transverse process of the L1 vertebra, but that's the medial arcuate ligament. So there's one on either side. Uh, they also get called the lumbo, so that's the medial lumbocostal arch. Now, if you look a little bit more closely, in here, that is quadratus lumborum. Um, it's a muscle of the posterior abdominal wall, often considered a muscle of the back. Quadratus lumborum is running from the transverse processes of the L1, L2, L3 and L4 vertebrae, oh, and the 12th rib, out to the ilium of, uh, of the pelvis, right? Um, so it, it moves the torso one way or the other anyway. Um, so again, the diaphragm is arching over the quadratus lumborum muscle because they overlap a little bit. The diaphragm at that point is running from the transverse process of L1 over or around quadratus lumborum to the 12th rib. And I said quadratus lumborum also comes from the 12th rib. So that's, it's kind of a bigger arch. So that would be the lateral arcuate ligament or the lateral lumbocostal arch. Now, I can kind of show this on another model. So this is a model of, of the lungs and the chest. Down here is the diaphragm. But what we can see down here, so we haven't got all the vertebrae, but we can see there's the aorta. So that's the median arcuate ligament there. And that's the celiac trunk, because we know the celiac trunk comes out anteriorly first from the aorta as soon as it appears from the median arcuate ligament. And then we see, look, we see an arch here and we see an arch here. So that's the, the medial arcuate ligament and that's the lateral arcuate ligament. These guys, these guys are not terribly important, but I've described the anatomy, so I've cleared up the confusion. You know what they are. Your focus, I think, is probably gonna be on the median arcuate ligament. So why does this anatomy come up? Why do students ask me about the median arcuate ligament? Well, imagine if the median arcuate ligament was just a smidgen lower. It would probably compress the celiac trunk. And the celiac trunk is supplying blood to all of those foregut structures like the stomach and the pancreas and the spleen and the lower esophagus and the liver, right? There are some anastomoses here, so there are other routes that blood flow can take, but if the blood flow, for example, to the stomach was reduced, uh, that might cause ischemia, which would probably cause pain and nausea and maybe vomiting and, and probably weight loss over a long term because you wouldn't be eating as much.
Now that would be median arcuate ligament syndrome or celiac trunk compression syndrome, but there are many other things around here that also cause pain. Uh, the esophagus, heartburn, uh, the stomach, the duodenum, ulcers. There are lots of reasons why pain might occur around here and nausea. And median arcuate lig ligament syndrome is rare. Uh, two in a hundred thousand people, I think. The other things are much more common, but it's a potential, it's a potential cause of, of pain and nausea in this region. Now, if we're considering uh, impaired blood flow through the celiac trunk, then Doppler ultrasound uh, would be a nice way of looking at this, right? But I also said that there are a lot of nerves around here. You've got the celiac trunk. So you've got a whole bunch of nerves in the same space, so maybe the nerves are being compressed and that's causing pain. Um, how could this happen? Well, maybe this is a congenital thing and the median arcuate ligament has always been a bit low. Um, maybe this has occurred after trauma in this region and tissues have been damaged and regrown in a different way. Or maybe there's been surgery in this region and again the tissues have been um, affected and repaired themselves so they're now compressing uh, the celiac trunk. Uh, the, the, the treatment is surgery, the, the, so the method for reducing that pressure on the celiac trunk, if that's the problem, is to uh, go in here surgically and, and you know, cut the median arcuate ligament to take the pressure off. But that is the anatomy of the median arcuate ligament. It's in the middle, it's a curve, it's not really a ligament. And then the medial arcuate ligament goes over psoas major, the lateral arcuate ligament goes over quadratus lumborum, and they're all shapes made by the diaphragm attaching to its very various bony attachment sites. Okay, median arcuate ligament. Um, anatomy explained, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. All right, see you next week.